Hi everyone, welcome to a brand new edition of Aftermath TV. I'm so happy to see you guys because I'm back and I missed you last week. So thanks well, for uh, thanks for not stealing my seat and giving it back and for allowing uh, me to be here We missed you week. too. You were yeah, in we Winnipeg? I was in Winnipeg with a lovely Jets fan, so I had a great time, but nice. I am happy to be here back on Aftermath <laughs> TV alongside Jimmy Corderas. Mm -hmm. Anthony Corelli, who is crying because he's so happy to see me. I missed you. <laughs> <laughs> and Nug. So. How's it going? This is, it was a lot of fun last week. We had a lot to talk about, but we have even more to talk about this week. Yeah, guys, backlash. And it's kind of the talk of the WWE world right now. Mm -hmm. uh, we have some wins and fails. And, Jimmy, you're going to start us off. And you liked the Daniel Bryan and Big Cass match. Uh, not, not specifically the match itself. I like the fact that Daniel Bryan had, had to be tested. You know, he's, since he's been cleared... We've seen him in a tag match, but this is his first singles match since being cleared. And it was a big test against Big Cass, and it was a very physical match. And he took a lot of punishment in this match, and he came out the other side looking good. And that's what I'm happy about. Hopefully, this is a good sign that uh, everything, every issue he had in the past is behind him, and he could move forward with his career. Yeah, it was a big opportunity for both guys. One, you know, Daniel Bryan's first pay-per-view match return, and, and Big Cass coming back from an injury. Now... Big Cass is a huge seven-foot guy. Not a good matchup for Daniel Bryan. He took a lot of beatings. And when you have a guy who's suffering from head trauma and uh, neck surgery and a bad arm, you don't want to have to put on extra mileage and make up for lost time and take a beating the way he did. But uh, he did. He came out on top. And it's kind of bad for Big Cass. This is a guy who has some ring rust. He hasn't been around. I'm a huge monster. And you lost. So... It was a lot to lose for Big Cass, but a lot to gain for Daniel Bryan. He may have lost the match, but I think he came out on top after the match. He beat Daniel Bryan senseless. Daniel Bryan was supposed to be on the after show, right. and then they had to cancel it because he was beaten so badly by Big Cass. Big Cass made a statement, win or lose that night, and I think going forward there are big things for Big Cass. And Nug, since you just had the hot seat last, your win had to deal with the very start of the pay-per-view. Yeah, the beginning of Backlash started so hot. You want to start a show with a bang, start yeah. it with The Miz and Seth Rollins. I think those two guys are the two hottest guys in WWE right now, especially Seth Rollins, who's just on a tear. The crowd couldn't be more behind him uh, when he's getting ready for his uh, stomp or, you know, Burn It Down has become a big thing. Mm -hmm. Everybody loves Rollins. And everybody hates Miz or appreciates what Miz does in that ring. And those two guys put on a real clinic to kick off the show. You know what I didn't like, though? That it only took Seth Rollins one stomp to take Miz out. I was just like... I, I kind of wanted the Miz to to come back a few more times. Well, I'm excited tough, about though. the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well, Anthony could tell you from experience that how tough Miz is. But uh, yeah, as far as that match goes, it was a beautiful way to kick off the yes. pay per view. It was match of the night in my opinion. For I sure. think I think Nug agrees with that. It, and it also it, here's the thing: the first match of a pay per view is supposed to set the tone. And, and kick the night off right. And that's what this match mm -hmm. actually did. I just feel bad for the rest of the card having to follow that. And I kind of think they didn't. Yeah. Well, it's, it's interesting because there's different types of fans. So the fans that are true fans that just enjoy the product, like kids and stuff like that, they'll react one way, for example, for The Miz. Mm -hmm. And then people that appreciate the performance of a superstar and, you know, they often look at other things like booking, etc. The enlightened, uh, you mean? The enlightened. <laughs> yeah, and they, okay. and they look at it another way. So uh, it's good guy, bad guy in a match. And then there's pro and con for the good guy and pro and con for the bad guy. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like four sets of fans going on in there. But, but way to start the show. Uh, Anthony, your win, Nia Jax, which is funny because our wins kind of contradict each other, but you yeah. take the floor first. Me and Nia <laughs> going back to babies of a pacifier. <laughs> I've been wanting to say that for a long time. Okay. No, Naya is an, an, it's one of those things, okay, her physical ability, it speaks for itself, but now she's growing into this role as being a WWE champion. Uh, and she's maturing, not only in the ring and, and you know, getting her confidence up with her skill set and her ability to, to, to wrestle, um, just being the champion. There's a whole lot that comes with it, and she's going to be doing more interviews and media days and just being a figurehead for the company. And I, it's, it's nice to see her growing into the role, kind of like how Jinder did. Yeah. I, I'm just going to go off topic for a second after that. I just want to hear Anthony do a little mumble rap one say, day. Uh, <laughs> Mixtape mix dropping in two, 2019, possibly, yeah, with, the, with those know. rap skills. You're going to put out know. that album? I was, I was worried about Nia post-match yeah. because she was saying all this very inspirational stuff. Stuff, and that tough Jersey crowd was booing the heck out of her. Mm -hmm. So I, I, what's go, what's going to happen going forward with hey, Nia? This, this is a crowd that enjoys yes. people like Snooki and all, all right, those guys from right. Jersey Shore. So 
Hey, yeah, I, I watch Jersey Shore. Um, <laughs> but you know what? My problem was is like during that match, and my win is um, that Alexa Bliss kind of at some point managed the match pretty well and took control of Nia, which I appreciate because she's so small in terms of height and Nia is very tall. Um, but the, the match itself fell flat at some point, and I don't know if it was just a tough Jersey crowd, but you could hear the silence. And then after the match, when Nia was on the mic and they were booing her, I was just like, I don't know if this the storyline's getting stale for, for viewers well, or well, what's what happening. Happened, well, well, this is my, my guess here, but what happens is, and we'll, we'll take down the, little, the third wall, whatever it's called, fourth, uh, mm -hmm. fourth wall. Um, so Nia's a big, strong monster, basically, right. in the women's category. And as soon as she becomes, officially becomes a good guy, there has to be a, a point in the match when you try and get sympathy from the audience. You know, we call it the heat, right? And when you see a monster who switches over, and it's going to happen with Braun Strowman too. Yep. If he becomes a good guy, there's going to have to be moments of the match where we're getting sympathy from a, a bad guy beating him up. And it's just unbelievable. With Nia is so physically dominant, just like Braun, who's so physically dominant, when that time comes, it, there can be a disconnect. Because she, she, she should get up and destroy and, Alexa in a second. But Kevin Owens on Monday Night Raw exactly. last night he, had that match against Braun Strowman, and he got sympathy yeah, for Braun Strowman. Because he's built up to be tough enough. Yeah. See, that's actually, that was, that was getting me my win, because that <laughs> matchup, okay, well, I'm getting off topic, but yeah, very good. No, but uh, to, to Anthony's point and to your point as well, we saw that last night. Again, like you said, when someone is a villain and they look indes indestructible like Braun Strowman has and like Nia Jax did when she was a villain, you have that aura of invincibility, and we're seeing it with Brock Lesnar right now. Like you said, once you become a, a, a hero or a good guy, there, you have to get the audience in, invested, and that's usually by sympathy. Here's yeah. my question from the Nia Jax and Alexa Bliss match. Is at some point, because Nia Jax then took control of it, she's tossing Alexa Bliss <laughs> like a rag doll. Does that start to become too much? There are rumors right now that Alexa Bliss has a shoulder injury, mm -hmm. and did, did WWE take that too far? In terms of it, no, because in in uh, in the performance aspect of of, of uh, sports entertainment, professional wrestling, as Anthony could tell you, accidents happen. You can get you can trip and fall in the ring. Look at look at uh, a while back, there was a wrestler who did a baseball slide and his ankle got oh, caught on yeah. caught, caught on the on Rainbow. the canvas. Yeah, and and he Snap. broke his ankle. Yeah. I mean, anything could happen. It's 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 just part and parcel with what happens. You know, the risks are there. It happens. Yeah, I mean, if she was injured beforehand. They should take that into consideration and try and uh, right. uh, avoid it. Um, back in the day, way before, <laughs> mo way before my time when people worked a little differently, um, if somebody was injured, I would actually attack that part yes. because I, I, I could make sure that you're safe. Um, backlash also received a lot of backlash from the pay-per-view. And, Nug, I want you to start us off with your fail. Yeah, uh, there's no better way to send the crowd home happy for a title match than having a double count-out. What a great oh, way to I have know. no decision in a no-disqualification match, which is a whole thing everybody mm -hmm. got into online. Yeah. But for me, I was so excited about the WrestleMania match between AJ and Nakamura, which ended with a clean ending, and then Nakamura uh, punched him in the nether regions. And then it's been disqualifications, and now a no DQ match ending in a count out. I'm already done with this. I don't want to see any more. This Rochambeau match for the title is something I'm not interested in. Just fight for real. Yeah. No. See, and to, to Nug's point as well, uh, I agree. If it was the, if, if they didn't have that result, the previous match, where it was a double count out outside the ring, I'd be okay with what happened Sunday. Yes. But we already so, kind of saw it. So my fail is your <laughs> fail, and then I thought about it and then I changed mine to <laughs> Carmella and Charlotte I don't and Jimmy this is kind of going into your fail I don't like Carmella being the Smackdown women's champion I don't think she's necessarily ready for that just like you think Jimmy but I'm also kind of upset for Charlotte because I feel like she just beat Asuka and now I was hoping that she would start working to get back to that title and she just cleanly lost to Carmella and also Carmella beating Charlotte in a clean match like that you know not cashing in money in the bank I wish they didn't save it for backlash. I wish it was a bigger stage, and I just was not a fan of that match. I feel sorry for Charlotte, and I'm not on board with Carmella right now. I think I think what we saw on Sunday was the vast difference between uh, the in-ring ability of, of Carmella and Charlotte and how different yes. they are on the scale because Carmella, obviously on the microphone, can handle herself very well. We've seen that already. And even with limited in-ring ability, you can work around that. In, in certain matches, uh, but 
Carmella just isn't there and isn't ready yet. Yeah, yeah I, I think in my work around it, but as a champion, it's kind of no, hard to work around see, it. Yeah, because the champion gets time. And hey, if you don't know how to wrestle. And you have four minutes, so you can cover it up. Right. You got 17 minutes, it's kind of hard to cover up. On a pay-per-view, yeah. too. You're like, damn, I did everything I know. How much time is left? Four minutes. <laughs> Anthony, take us home with your fail. Bobby My fail Lashley. was last night. Um, but it was, okay, we, and what's funny is we, we just talked about it, about they haven't really introduced us to Bobby Lashley. He just showed up. It's been 10 years. There are <laughs> nine-year-old kids who have no idea. There's 14-year-old kids that have no idea because they don't remember before they were four. Um, <laughs> And they made an attempt, and it was just wah, wah, wah. <laughs> Renee sat there and said, tell me about yourself. He talked about his sisters. I, I, if this was a, something to get us hyped for his sisters to show up on Monday Night Raw, then for sure, good job. But <laughs> Bobby Lashley. It's the is, Lashley sisters. He was so boring. Like, he, his favorite hobby is watching paint dry. That's what I gathered from that video last night. It was not a good interview. No, and, and they, they showed a back history of him and his athletic ability and stuff like that. That was better. Which was great. This is what you want to see. should have just left it at that. Yeah, thank you very much. Just well, leave it there. backlash is in the books, and so is our wins and fails from the pay-per-view. Stay where you are, everyone. We have The Miz coming up next. Ooh. On Tuesday, I will have a qualifying match for the Money in the Bank match. Mm. So once I win that match, it's on to Money in the Bank. Once I win that match, it's on to the WWE Championship. And think about what the Money in the Bank contract gives you. It gives you all the power. The WWE Champion doesn't have any power. It's all about strategy, all about finding a way to become that champion. And that... that that champion, whoever it is, whoever it may be, whether it's AJ Styles, Shinsuke Nakamura, or it's somebody else. Yeah. You're whoever no has to be that champion. title, understand that I will find the perfect moment to pin you if I win money in the bank. If I get that contract, it has all the power. And if you're smart and you're, strat and you're the ultimate strategist like myself, you will find a way to become the WWE champion. And honestly, right now, I have never been more hot. I have never been, I am on top of my game. People will look at this match and go, oh, well, you lost. It doesn't matter what happens. It matters if you get people talking, if you move the needle, and that's what I do. I move the needle for this show, I move the needle for Raw when I was on it, and I move the needle for SmackDown. And I will move the needle for Ms. and Mrs. I will move the needle for whatever show that I'm on. Whenever I touch a mic, whenever I step in a WWE ring, I make it must see. I make it the most relevant show in all of TV. Uh, if I could just have like an ounce of confidence that The Miz has, I feel like I could take on the world. Oh my goodness, I could listen to him talk all day. Um, guys, does he have the ability to actually move the, the needle like he says well, he does? Well, it's nice that he thinks he does. I mean, like, every <laughs> every villain will tell you that they're the ones that move the needle. Uh, he's very entertaining. He's, he's one of those people that... When he's on the show and he's on, he's very engaging and people, uh, you know, are very invested in what he's saying and what he's doing. Yes. Do people actually tune in to see The Miz? I would argue maybe that's not the case. I agree with that, actually. I was thinking when he said that, I'm like, do people actually, when they know, you know, the Miz and Mrs. now that it's going to be on, mm -hmm. do they know when that's going to be on that I want to tune in and are they watching or are they really just listening to him speak when they're watching when there, SmackDown or The Miz and Mrs. is an interesting thing because is he going to be the Miz? Well, to be honest, when he's not on TV, he's kind of still like the Miz <laughs> in, yeah. the, in yeah. real life. So if he's that guy on the show, it'd be at least something to watch. Otherwise, he's, yeah, not so much, a little bit boring. But in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man, is king. <laughs> and there seems to be a real shortage of mic skills in the current roster of both SmackDown and Raw. There's no one out there that's absolutely captivating me and making me get up and scream. So when the, you know he's he's good compared to everybody else right now. Um, does I mean, it you kill can you say, to say that. So in other words, huh? does it kill you to say that? Grading on a curve is what you're doing. Grading on a curve. Yeah, I mean he's okay. Um, this is the thing though. If he does get money in the bank, he's gonna. Make it a focal point, mm -hmm. and he's going to use it a lot because he talks a lot, and he's he's so it'll it'll be utilized well with him because some other people they'll come out and carry it, but they're not going to brag about it as much. And he's going to he, he's the kind of guy you don't want to have success because he brags so much. But in bragging, you're bringing the success to the forefront and stuff. So um, I don't mind him actually having some success in this situation. Yeah. I don't think he thinks he's right. He knows he's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. And that's the difference between a lot of people. I might think I'm right about something. Miz believes wholeheartedly that he is the star of WWE. And that's why it sells. Because yes. it's genuine and authentic. And that's why I love watching him. Because it's just 
straight confidence. Like and I love any that. good I villain, he believes Agreed. that he is absolutely right in everything he does. Yeah. But he shouldn't give away his strategy. No, he shouldn't. Villains never do. Um, okay, so we know that some superstars have qualified for Money in the Bank, uh, and that is Ember Moon, Finn Balor, and Braun Strowman, yes. my guy. Uh, um, and who do we think would be would do the best holding the contract? I think Braun Strowman is an interesting choice, only because if with him, I'd like him to be the one guy who says. I got the Money in the Bank briefcase, and I'm going to cash it in at X date. Yes, yeah, yeah, SummerSlam. Whoever is champion on SummerSlam, this is getting cashed in on you. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I hear you saying because he's so big and strong, he doesn't have to wait for an opportunity like the Miz would have oh, to wait shot. for when somebody is weakened or at a compromised state. Which is, which is what it's for. The money in the bank is, it allows people that can't win on their own to take advantage of an opportunity. Braun doesn't need that, but if he calls it out, yeah. that's a nice twist on it where he's saying, I'm not gonna, I don't need a surprise. I'm Braun doing it on this date. should just climb the ladder, swallow the briefcase, <laughs> and climb back down the ladder. Don't yeah. you guys think that Braun Strowman would deserve that spotlight though? Like I feel like right now he's kind of lost in WWE because he's never fighting for a title. And I feel like if he's given that he contract. should. He should be I the agree. next guy to fight Braun with or without this, or Brock without this briefcase or, or having it. It doesn't matter. He, that's the thing. He doesn't need the briefcase. He doesn't, he doesn't need it. He doesn't he need the briefcase. And, and Braun's at a point now where he doesn't need the title because uh, people. There's this weird kind of thing going on now with a lot of the enlightened who think that in order to be a superstar, you have to be the champion. You have to hold the title. Not at all. There are guys that have never held the title that were big. Roddy Piper, Ted DiBiase. I can go through Jake Roberts. There's a whole list of guys that were. Super, super over superstars that never held a title. Legends. He doesn't need it. Hall of Famers. Right. As right much now, as I love Braun, I want the Miz to do this because yeah. I just feel like it's going to be so entertaining. And I'm, a, I'm like, I'm a big, like, you know, I just love the entertainment value of WWE. So. Well, I think and now something. that it's both shows on bo all the shows, exactly. uh, both SmackDown and Raw, if you get that briefcase, who do you cash in on? Yeah. Ooh, yeah. interesting. Well, to have guys, a piece of filth with the coming up after the break, who thought that we would ever talk about Kane and politics at the same time? Oh. Don't go anywhere. Is the Big Red Machine on his way to becoming the Big Red Mayor of Knox County? Yes! Yes! I'm Kathy Kelly for WWE Now, and yes, you heard that right. Kane is running for mayor of Knox County, Tennessee. The former WWE champion announced his candidacy last April and has been campaigning ever since while still competing in WWE. This past Tuesday night, Kane's path to victory became a lot clearer when he won the primary election to become the Republican nominee in Knox County by 17 votes. Fellow WWE superstars quickly took to social media to congratulate the Big Red Machine on his monumental primary victory with the likes of Charlotte Flair and WWE Hall of Famer Bubba Ray Dudley expressing their excitement for Kane. Soon after his primary win, Kane took to Twitter to thank everyone for their votes and support as he now eyes the general election in August. Stick with us here at WWE.com for more updates on this mayoral race. And one thing is for sure, if Kane wins, his victory party is going to be lit. He has to do that. Oh, man. Glenn Jacobs, a.k.a. Kane, for mayor. Who thought that we would ever be saying that? But I'm extremely happy for him. Uh, guys, do we think that his WWE career would be working against him in this case or for him? I don't see how it could. I mean, obviously, Jesse Ventura was governor of Minnesota, so it didn't hurt him. And uh, Jesse Ventura is a little more out there than, than Glenn or Kane. Uh, Kane is actually one of the smartest people, yes. especially in, when it comes to political talk uh, that I've ever met in my life. He is very intelligent, very bright, and he would be great for Knox County. I would just wish he was, uh, uh, you know, a citizen of Ontario and could run for this province. That would help us. Yeah. Out. But anyways, that's well, just me. Yeah, there's no secret that, that Glenn is super smart and he has, a, a, a you know, uh, an interest in politics and just a, a wealth of information. And if you've had the opportunity to sit in locker rooms with him, he, oh, he, he is the, the, the learning tree, you know. But, I mean... Um, being king will give him a platform, but he's going to have to speak as soon as he opens his mouth. And if whatever you're expecting, if you're expecting a big dumb wrestler to kind of talk, you're going to be no. shocked. And if you already know his his political pedigree and, and his his knowledge, he, then you're expecting what's going to happen. He as soon as he starts speaking, 
you immediately say, wow, this is an honest person. He's an intelligent person. He's going to do good, and he's big and strong. I just can't <laughs> believe that this guy is possibly going to be the mayor of a town when his campaign uh, platform involves fire and car batteries. As long as, as long as if he wins, he does the... The pyro just with the, once. That's just, just once. Yeah, that's just all a party we need. for the bonfire. Yeah. Um, and Anthony, you were kind of talking about if you expect a, a big dumb wrestler to get up there and not know what to say, um, don't expect that from Kane. Will this end sort of a stigma that some people might have when they think of WWE superstars? Well, the stigma problem, I mean, a long time ago there was that traditional, let me tell you something, that day you're coming to fight. I mean, that's kind of gone now, and I think we, we, we've, we've calmed it down. Um, to make it to the WWE, you, you gotta be pretty smart. Yes. Um, you have to know so many things. One, just to know how to wrestle takes a lot of uh, um, intelligence because there's so much information yes. and experience needed. Then learning how to deal with people because you are negotiating constantly with people and um, those are skill sets that are directly transferable to the political world. Just being intelligent, having a work ethic, being able to travel nonstop. If you make it to a high level in politics, you're okay. traveling all the time. And just talking with people and, and, and negotiation skills. So it's, it's a very, very transferable skill set that he's, uh, he's carrying with him. 100%. There's, there's only one quick drawback is that stigma that's attached to professional wrestling slash sports entertainment still exists and unfortunately will continue to exist because people just don't get it. Mm -hmm. There's the character that they play, and then there's the real person behind the character. Yeah, um, actors don't have that same problem. Exactly. No. Well, good no. luck to Kane. I'm sure that we'll be following that story pretty closely. For but sure. right now, Ask Aftermath. We get to talk to you, lucky um, Aftermath fans, uh, our lucky panel who gets to get questions from you. First question, what is your favorite or least favorite chant in WWE right now? Hate all of them. Yeah. <laughs> Probably the one I hate the most is uh, what? During a promo. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, but that's during a promo. A chant from the audience that I just cannot stand is uh, CM Punk. I don't want to hear that. It's not working. Whatever you're trying to do with that, he's not coming back. How about we are awesome? Yeah, we no, are awesome. No, you're not. Yeah. And, and, and one of my favorite ones, you still got it. And this is usually chanted to people who have never lost it. Yeah. I mean, come or on. Or you deserve yeah. it. Oh, you deserve That's it. Everybody, going, everybody, everybody deserves it. Everybody gets a ribbon. Everybody, yeah. everybody gets a trophy. It. There's one yes. that is silly when they say, uh, and I, I understand the appreciation of the match, but fight forever. You fight forever. You can't fight forever. It has to be a finish. And I, <laughs> Three or I four want to go syllables. Home. That's yeah. what they can handle. For me, it was when I was at WrestleMania watching the NXT match, and I forget who was who was going um, at the moment in time, but it was someone made a hit. Boo. Then another person. Yay. Yay. Oh, yay, yay, boo. 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 yay, boo. Yay, boo. Yay, boo. Little yay, but, boo. like, for two minutes. Yeah. I was like, this is funny for 15 seconds. But, I, you know, what? but then I thought about it afterwards, and I'm like, I really do enjoy how on the same page everyone is and in unison and... What I loved about w the WWE community yeah. is that everyone's together. But this is all we have time for. I'm so yeah. sorry. Right. I could talk about this forever. I know you guys could too. Enjoy talk the next ap uh, episode of SmackDown Live, and we'll see you guys next week. Talk forever. Talk forever. <laughs> <laughs>